have China's Huyavads uh, for the finals. This is the first cup of their big tournament series. And this is the grand finale featuring players like Chi Tu, Quan Mei, and uh, a couple of other really great players. So uh, if you guys are here just for the patch notes, I'll see you guys next time. In the meantime, we're going to start some CNVODs. Uh, let's go ahead and get ready. <laughs> okay, so this is Huey Cup uh, Finals Top 8 They play 5 games And then uh, This portal is 3 cost champion Start things off who is the guy in the bottom? Chitu? He is uh, one of the original OGs from like set one, two, and three. Uh, I compare him a lot to like Kurum X, where like he's just been around for a really long time competing and has won um, several tournaments. Uh, these days, Chitu is more known, like he's more of like a competitive streamer. He hasn't like won as many events as other people, but uh, he's, he's a good player. And then uh, we'll watch at uh, 1.25 speed. Now he's a Soju. Oh, I wouldn't go as far as to say that. The Soju of China, his name is Honglian. He's like the most popular streamer, but apparently he's like... He's not, he's not at Soju's tier of popularity, but he is, I think, the most popular. <clears throat> Actually, hold on. Let me grab my water real quick. I'll be right back one sec. All right, we start off with. Wait, what? Why do we have an anvil? Oh, oh, this is a spectator bug view. Faded Emblem, Lucky Ricochet with an early fortune. Oh, it's a Teemo too. Interesting. Not sending any items. It's probably going to be Kaisa. Yeah, there's snapshots today, so uh, th they'll be they'll be climbing. We're gonna catch up with snapshots in a few hours or in a couple hours. We're basically gonna watch this for like two hours because it's like five games. And it goes by pretty quick, and then we'll start watching snapshots. The problem with snapshots is that uh, there's no one streaming their POV, so uh, and the spectator mode doesn't work. So we we have to we have to find people who are streaming their their climb. Hopefully, some people turn on their streams, but if they don't, then watching the snapshot and following it is going to be nearly impossible. I guess we could ask certain people to stream their climb. We might have to watch through people's existing POVs. Like, uh, like Setsuko. We have to watch Setsuko to watch other people's snapshot. Okay. Patient study, so fast eight board. Rod tier glove. Levels to five, trying to keep his streak going. We saw Rek'Sai. Oh, he's texting the fortune. One. He's win streaking, so it's like not worth going for fortune right now. You you actually want to just win streak stage two with fortune, or rather, you you rather just not play fortune stage two and just win streak. To be more, uh, be more precise. Frontline Timo too. Let me uh, lower the volume here just slightly. 
What are snapshots for? For qualification for the cup. The titanian trials and cup. <laughs> Watch this sounds like a great idea. Muted or unmuted? Probably muted, probably muted. Probably muted. My portal pick rate is literally 13 to 16. Do you think my account is rigged? Sure. More dog. You can ask more dog directly. You might have a dev console hack. Five faded a Mumu. Gargantuan, Darius. Clear Yone angle. So we have a Yone player, a faded player, a fortune player, a fast eight. Fast 8 Kaisa with Tear, Glove, and Rod. Last Whisper, Tattoo of Toxin. Oh, a Crown Guard slam. Might be like, a, just, I mean, they, they are angling Kaisa. It theoretically could be Senna. You know what's kind of sad about things like Titans is that it's also really good on carries like Darius, and it feels like if the cool thing about Titans giving as much AP as it did is it made certain champions more viable. And now, as a result, it'll be significantly weaker. Then it will still be good. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, they 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 gave her a fix to her targeting. It's a really big deal. Senna should still be solid. They gave her a little bit of damage nerf, but they made her hit much more consistently, which is a good thing. I mean, she cared about both her autos and her ability. But uh, she got she got a pretty significant buff, and she did get nerf. Do you think any real cards are going to survive? Oh, yeah, I think so. I, I, I'd be very, very surprised if there were no reroll comps viable. Like, maybe some people could say, like, reroll for the most part is not going to be popular. But I'd be surprised if all reroll comps, if there was not a single viable reroll comp, I'd be very, very surprised. For example, uh, there are some comp, there are some units that uh, that were already pretty solid that don't need to get buffed, and they they buffed it like Zyra. And I know that people are talking about like all the four cost buffs, which is which is a big deal. It is a huge deal, but it doesn't mean that other people like if everyone's just playing for four cost. That get, that should theoretically mean that people are given time and a window to reroll, and if it's a strong enough reroll, then it should be able to uh, it should be able to keep up if if you're able to hit it fast enough. I'd be very surprised if there were no viable reroll comps. Like Zyra got better. Uh, they they buffed um like some some individual units. That might be able to be rerolled. Like, I mean, okay, they, I, I said Garen Hero Augment, but I'm not entirely sure if that's like a thing. Nar got compensated buff, so he still should actually be good, even though uh, Titans got worse. Things like that. Dude, this Darius. Okay. Okay, I mean, this is this is Titans nerf shouldn't win that, right? I guess he does less damage as opposed to survive as long, but that's what's supposed to fix next patch. Heavenly Emblem. Oh, God. I feel like I haven't seen people take many two for one at three two. But this spot, may, you might take it. Freaky Friday. Yeah, this is a spot where you, you could take it. Oh, he's playing Kindred Faded Reroll. Oh, oh no, no, he's not. He's not. Is, he, is he playing this into. Um, is, he, is he playing this Faded spot into Syndra or is he trying to reroll Kindred? With two for one, it makes me think that he's, he might be rerolling the Kindred. 
I've seen uh, for people who are skeptical and that think he's going for Syndra, I've seen multiple Chinese players go for faded Kindra. If everyone is going for four cost, three people could hit three star four cost. Uh, I don't think it works that way, especially given how the bag sizes and stuff works. Because if uh be, because it also theoretically becomes easier to grief people as well. I don't know. I I I don't, I don't think that's that's true. I am a deadly harness is three going long. It wants to going long. Interesting. A perfect meta for me would be four and five cost oriented with a few two and three cost re rolls. I mean, I, I I don't know what the actual percentage is, but I think most people tend to slant that way, where you like want to play around four costs a good percentage of the time. Bryce said like sixty percent of the time. He said he wants something like sixty percent of the meta to be four Man, costs. I'm getting more dogged again. And then like thirty percent to be like two and three cost, and then like ten percent to be like one cost slash like all in go level nine five cost. I don't know if I agree with that, but I, I understand what he's trying to say. He wants you to play. He, the game feels a lot better if you generally play around four costs, but it feels like you don't have to just like re-roll and bang your head against the wall. Magic Mike in the pants. Thank you for the prime. I'm pretty sure my perfect meta is that there isn't like a percentage of the meta that you're supposed to do xyz i think the i, I think theoretical best t case t best case scenario for a tft meta is that every game is a different scenario of like whether or not you're supposed to do one thing or the other the more like expected and Man, predictable it is the worse it again. is fortune cash out into a bunch of gold some items, a duplicator. I don't think we, I don't even think we got items actually. Bunch of, a bunch of gold and a duplicator. He's playing around Ash. This is thing for the Prime as well. <clears throat> okay, so this board, we're going to clearly angle for or Kaisa. We do have five copies of Teemo, but we put Obsidian Cleaver onto Teemo. Also, I wonder if we're going to put Obsidian Cleaver on Kaisa whatsoever. The problem with Obsidian Cleaver is that it gives no actual inherent combat stats outside of HP. Oh, is this the three item? He instantly declined. Interesting. Interesting. Wait, wait, what was it? It was three components, right? You know, who was it saying? Okay, so there, was, there was this conversation yesterday that it's theoretically, mathematically incorrect to pass this. That you're always supposed to take it. And from what I've seen, I just, I think, I, I, unless this person might have taken it and might have slammed his items already. I'm not entirely sure. But we just saw Chinese players pass it. What do you guys think? Does China just suck? Is China terrible? I mean, that's probably, that's, that's the wrong conclusion. You can't just judge one individual decision and just be like, well, this, you know, this entire region is bad. I'm just, I'm just trying to stoke some fires, poke the flames. I think this person skipped it as well. They had the center in the shop. Three people skipped it. Three people skipped it.
Oh my god, another prismatic orb? There's so many prismatic orbs this game. Silas 2, rolling down 25 HP. He has a duplicator. He rolled past Ash Pair. Kaisa, Kaisa, Kaisa. There's a Kaisa. Four trick shot, four bruiser. Looking for another Kaisa. To get past like four ashes. Don't worry, next patch, that's supposed to be addressed. You're supposed to pick up those those ashes and flex around it. Okay, well he has he has lucky ricochet, so you probably don't do that. If you have uh if you have a specific augment that plays around a trait, you kinda have to play around it. If you if you take lucky ricochet and then play around ash instead, uh, you're at a major disadvantage. Jeweled Lotus is really good. It's very, very good. Jeweled Lotus works really well because of how many instances of damages you have on Kaisa. What board is this? The Ghostly board? You can take Martyr if you want. Martyr is really good because you have new recruits. So you have extra units that die and give more healing. He's rolling for Senna 3. He's at 7 right now. He has a dupe. So he can roll pretty deep if he wants. Tempo really matters, so he might roll here until he just hits. Narvi shop. Oh man, we just rolled so much gold and we miss. That feels really bad. That feels really, really bad. Yikes. Uh, yeah. I mean, okay, he rolled. He wanted to hit, and he rolled until he could try to hit, but he missed. So you, you obviously couldn't roll when the when the round started. One hundred and twenty-three gold. Hedge fund. This guy looks like he runs a hedge fund. He can't. <laughs> This guy dressed to impress. Midnight Siphon, Yorick player, get it online. Three star. Bro, this guy is trying to to take his game, take his goals to the next game. Bro is the CEO of Capitalism. That's right, he won. He won. If you guys watched my presentation the other day on uh, how I how I asked 100 players how they hit Challenger. I talked about Monopoly Go. That guy's playing Monopoly Go. He's just he's just running around the board and just collecting more money. That's it. That's the game. He's still at 40 HP. Not not anymore. He just lost. I think he's at 31 now. Okay, so no one's taking bow. Interesting. Usually people. Uh, oh, no wonder Juan is not hitting because some people are pulling like these kinds of units out as well, like the the Aatroxes and stuff. I mean, he, he was rolling for Senna mainly, but it makes sense why he was so low in count on things like Aatrox. Hey, we talked about how Kindred Nar was making a little bit of a, a comeback, right? It was rising on TFT Academy. Also, it looks like we have three Kindreds and eight Nars. So, we're pretty much in the must-hit Nar camp. Senna 3. Or Juan Mei. Kabuko invites everyone to dance. Extra resources. Dude, this lobby actually got so many free resources. Two prismatic orbs plus things like this and the Cho anvils. I've been playing your AP flex board with Jana Zyra and your video helped a lot to refine it. So thanks a lot for that. You're welcome. I'm glad that it helped you. I'm, if, if it helps even just one player, I'm glad I make the, those guides for you guys. 
。I'm gonna take off my hoodie real quick. Sorry, but I was getting warm in here. Oof. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. Keep up the great work. <clears throat> more than half didn't dance. Oh, I only thought I only thought I saw one or two, but I guess a lot of people didn't dance. Adam, thank you, man. Thirteen months. Oh my God, it's been so long. Doric, Midnight Siphon. With Bloodthirster, Redemption, and Jewel Gauntlet. Couldn't deal a single bit of damage to Yone. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. Do you actually Best need to TFT dance? content creator. Not even close. Hey, Bang, thank you so much for the four months. 14 months. Wow, 14 months. Dude, it's crazy. It's crazy. 14 months in a row. My God, thank you so much. Do you actually need to dance or do you need to walk in? You just need, you just need to walk into the, the center and then you dance. Wait a second, did they just get another gold orb? What the heck? There's so many resources this game. Double Infinity Edge, Kaisa. With Jeweled Lotus. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is the fortune player. This is Chi Tu. I may hit Alawi 3. Aphelios. Okay, so the, the, the Faded player went Aphelios 3, which makes sense. He also got so many items this game. <gasps> he lost. I mean, he's going to level 9. He hit Aphelios 3. He has 2 for 1. He's good to go. Dude, the Yorick 3 Midnight Siphon can't kill anything. Come on, Yorick. Come on, Yorick. No. Man, it's a really cool board, but uh, Yorick doesn't really do anything. What is this board? Fast 9 Azir. Azir Lissandra. Ooh, Fast 9 EP. I haven't seen that in a while. What is bro cooking? Six behemoth, four umbral Yorick. <laughs> man, what, is, what is this guy doing, man? Oh, he even has a JG on Yorick. Oh, God. It's, it actually just looks so bad. <laughs> he can't even kill a Galio, too. He's just stuck on the Galio. <laughs> oh he lives he lives he lives dying slowly dying slowly hey at least he outlived uh dj dyz died so at least he, he outlived him <laughs> i hope he had fun i mean he probably had fun but like this yorick was just not doing anything man oh god I, now that, I'm not saying I don't think Midnight Siphon is bad is a bad augment. I just think that his setup doesn't look very good. You know what people believe that you should be doing with Yorick? People think that you should reroll Janna. The stats say that if you hit six Umbral, it's actually really good. But I was talking to Rainplosion. Rainplosion thinks that you reroll Janna alongside Yorick. I have never tried it myself, but the next patch it might be good because they buffed the Loon. And so maybe a Loon, Yorick, and Janna can like trio in a really good way. Maybe. They buffed Umbral as well. Like Midnight Siphon, Yorick as a tank, and you just build him as a tank. And you have a Loon, Janna dual carry. I can see it. He doesn't have a carry? I know. I don't, I don't even know what he's cooking, man. Uh, is the Loon going to be a real unit? I don't know. Uh, she, they, she, got, she got a pretty sizable buff to her damage. So we'll see. Heavenly Yone. They did nerf 7 Heavenly, and they did nerf Yone, and they did nerf Titan. So getting nerfed across the board. Two for one, looking for a Mumu three. Faded a Mumu. Interesting. Five faded a Mumu. 
T2 hanging in there. The mirror match. I learned something about the mirror match watching Juan Mei. You actually want to separate your trick shots in the mirror. Because the way they bounce, they could kill, they could kill, they could like basically AOE down your units and have them bounce and kill. So they separate them in the late game. By Faded, Lissandra, and Amumu. The set nerf to, uh, for the Faded bonus is also a big deal. Oh, this guy took reinforcements. Probably for the for the Kaisa. I took reinforcement and uh, found zero Kaisas yesterday. I played a game where um, I took reinforcement and I realized that uh, because I, I realized I was in a three or four way contest for Kaisa, I couldn't find a single Kaisa all game. I went eighth. <laughs> I, the only Kaisa I found was on. I eventually found one of the very. Like my, my last fight on a carousel or something like that. It was pretty bad. Tatsugo did it. Yeah, what, what did he get? What did he get that game? Where did he place? It literally doesn't work. Wait, what? You don't get a two-star copy of a unit with, with with everything must go? That's weird. In five Kaisa to five three. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Same with me. That was almost exactly my scenario. I took reinforcement because I was in a situation where I need to hit Kaisa. And I'm not really happy about it. But if I took it, I would have been hyper stable at 4-2. Didn't find it till the end of the game. And then I died. Kaisa lottery feels like super bad. I, I hate it. I think I think I I think if I didn't play Kaisa at all this patch, I think I'd be up 300 LP or something like that. I'm pretty sure every time I get into a situation where I need to hit this Kaisa unit, I just miss. I, and that might be over exaggerating. It might be like a, like 150 LP, but it feels like 300 LP. And then if I hit Kaisa 2, I have like one star, everything else. <laughs> Feels bad, man. It'd be like that sometimes. Heavenly Udyr 2. You know, this is... Okay, so by the way, th this variation of Heavenly is also something to uh, pay attention to. Yes, they're nerfing Yone. But I'm pretty sure that 7 Heavenly was just so... Or like just Heavenly in general was so good. That you could play around legendaries and Kane and also still have a lot of success. So yeah, yes, Yone is very good, but this is this is the third time in three days we've seen China get like a, a good placement with this kind of variation of Heavenly. Keep in mind. Keep it in mind. Especially if they buff things like Lee Sin and Kane got a 200 HP buff. Yeah, they nerfed the seven heavenly bonus, but if you get 200 extra HP on Kane, 200 XP, 250 HP on Lee Sin, and 580 on Lee Sin, I'm pretty sure it's still going to be good. I think Heavenly Warriors might be actually insane next patch. The more I think about it, that's going to be one of my predictions. I think Heavenly Warriors are going to be really good. You play Heavenly plus any four cost that like makes sense and splash it in and just, and just give them items and watch them carry. Yeah. On 14.7 B, you lost 128 LP with Kaisen, but that sounds right. That sounds right. That sounds right. I said it felt like 300, but it's probably 150. I think I'm I'm right on the money. Have you seen Dragon Lord Kane? No. That doesn't sound uh, like it'd be that insane, but. Maybe it's good. He sold Yone. That's that, That's a good thing. That means that he's upgrading from a 3 cost to a 4 cost, which isn't a thing in this current meta, generally speaking. That's why I'm saying it's noteworthy, because how many of you are selling your 3 cost for 4 cost this patch? 
No, that's right. None of you are doing that. So it's a, it's a good thing. Okay, you got third, but I think it's that's still a good placement. Like, third's a good placement. Faded emblem for the faded player. You can go seven faded now. Disgusting. Wait. I think he actually took it from him. Oh my gosh, the hedge fund guy. Oh no, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Dude, hedge fund fast 10 playing AP or fast 9 playing AP. I played a, one of the one I played a, one of the cooler games I played this patch uh this morning. This morning I played like one or two games. I played 7 Ink Shadow Azir. That was lit. I actually put so many of my ink shot ink tattoos onto Azir. And uh I put like tattoo of fury and tattoo of toxin and I watched Azir go crazy. It was actually really hype. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that you're supposed to put tattoos onto five cost. Like tattoos on Irelia, tattoos on Azir, tattoos on like obviously on Udir. Things like that. And uh it, it ends up being really, really, really good. My my Azir two was like two tapping uh Yone three in, in the late stages of the fight. I had like adaptive tattoo of fury, a tattoo of toxin, and he would cast twice on Yone and kill it. It was it was nuts. Faded Ash. Dude, this board looks unstoppable. He has way too much value. Way too much value. Best friends, hedge fund, crash test dummies, just way too much stuff. Dude, hedge fund guy did it. 123 gold into a fast nine and win out. Like a beast. What up, junkie? Doing all right. Doing all right. We're uh, we're just powering through C and VODs. Our snapshot watch party starts in like an hour and a half. Exit out of this. These super edited profile picks go crazy. Yeah. There's a you know there, there's a there's a joke um amongst that one my my when I was <clears throat> when I was dating a Chinese girl, she told me a joke one time that always stuck with me. She said, Koreans have mastered plastic surgery. Japanese people have mastered makeup and Chinese people have mastered Photoshop. Those are the, those are the three skills of deception <laughs> that, that all these countries have mastered. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know what to do. I just laughed. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> the art of deception. <laughs> uh. Would you go clubbing with Mortdog out of respect or fear? Oh, out of curiosity. I want to see how hard Mortdog goes at the club. Mortdog strikes me as a guy that uh, would chill at the club except for one song. If If the one song gets put on, he probably would get on the dance floor and boogie to that one song. And it's probably like, it's probably like Ice Ice Baby by, by, by Vanilla Ice. Something like that. I only use that example because that's what Brian Kibler's song is. And that was like the one song he could do. Probably a Nintendo, yeah, probably a Nintendo soundtrack. That probably sounds right. Uh, Pick of the litter into Yone pair with a Titans on the bench. Wow. Beast. Over encumbered last whisper. So probably gonna lean into Kaisa slash maybe Senna reroll. Tom Kench. All right. Dude, no one. Wait, half the lobby isn't participating. There's like 
Ah, okay, okay, okay. There's like, there's like, what? There's like two people not participating. Oh, oh, they missed a couple of pawns. They missed a couple of pawns. Man, where's the, where's the communist spirit? Come on, everyone. It's, it, 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 it's, it's, everyone pitches in together, you know? Come on now. You get three item anvils. I feel it doesn't matter as long as half participate. It, it, they missed a couple of pawns for what it's worth, but yeah, if, if like five to six people are doing it, usually you get good coverage. It matters more for people who are going in for the Kabuko dance. Why would you want to avoid this early? Because some people get like really strong direction and they get crazy power spikes. Like the person that found double Yone, they know exactly what they're going to play. And so you're helping them spike. Or maybe you're so far ahead that you don't want people to have catch up mechanics. If you don't want to, you fake out by pretending you're going to a puddle. Ah, so like, yeah, don't. It's, it's like it's like Among Us. You're trying to pretend that you're being productive, but you're actually just sabotaging the task. Okay, guys, I'm gonna go to electrical, fix the wiring, and then you're just yeah. I like it. Wait, I think that'd be kind of fun. What if all of a sudden an encounter just turns into a game of Among Us? Now that would be hype. That would be hype. You just call an emergency meeting on the on the carousel. <laughs> it would take as long as the set encounter, right? So you might as well have us do some kind of social deception game. And they all they even have the cane mechanic the cane mechanic to eject people out so uh <laughs> everyone just votes to execute one person and if that if you and if you get it right everyone gets plus lp the, but the the one person loses lp if you, if you correctly guess the imposter <laughs> uh, that'd be so bad What if the mini games was summoners? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so uh, back about it about a year and a half ago, I was still working at Twitch. Actually, it's about a year ago. A year ago, I was still working at Twitch. I worked at Twitch Rivals. Uh, for people who don't know, I worked at Twitch for eight years. I worked on Twitch Rivals, and one format I wanted to do for a tournament was imposters, where uh, each person on a team. Of, uh, of League of Legends was the imposter trying to sabotage their team, but they couldn't get caught. And if they successfully sabotaged every at the end of the game, everyone would vote for who they thought the imposter on the team was that was trying to sabotage their game. And if they were correct, they would get bonus money. And if they were wrong, then the imposter would get the bonus money. So your job as the imposter on the League of Legends team was to try and int, but make it not obvious. You, if you were the, if you were a support player. You would try to like make sure to like mess up the engages like that, but like not try to get caught. <laughs> oh, so like VCS, yes, yeah, yeah. So that was the format that uh that we suggested, but it, it, I think it never took off because uh League of Legends never came back to Twitch Rivals, unfortunately. Negotiations between Twitch and and Riot for for Twitch Rivals broke down. But it sounds like a really funny format, a really funny format. For reference, VCS this season had 32 people getting invested. Wait, 32? Every player in VCS got. I, I heard that there was an investigation for match fixing, but what the heck? That's so many. How many people that. How many? What's the percentage of the league at that point? I mean, the big reason why is because pro salaries or to try to make it as a pro league player in general in these like in developing regions is just harder. Okay, he waited till okay, so he was loose streaking, so he was waiting till the end of stage two to pick up all his rewards from the the Tom Kench thing. 
I last whisper. Is this another Kaisa force with fortune? The two out of three fortune, maybe. Thirty-two out of fifty players. That is freaking wild. Oh my god. Thirty-two players are being investigated. <laughs> it's so sad too because it's like for them it's like well if they get banned they're they're probably gonna get a, another job and make more money than they would be being pro league players but that's not on like it's like kind of not on like riots right isn't that more of like riot that they're local i don't, I don't know I, i'm not entirely sure how to how to break down that ecosystem i'm not super uh informed on the on the the ecosystem of sea league of legends esports I think I'll just uh, refrain from commenting further. This person already has Kaisa. Is there like four players playing Kaisa in this lobby? That's crazy. Raining gold? Yeah. Uh, China in general picks Econ Augments on 3-2 very often right now in the current meta. Very often. Gargantuan Resolve on 3-2 when you already have three items on Yone. So this is actually a downside of popping the item components early but how is he supposed to know he was going to hit 3-2 gargantuan resolve too healthy sleight of hand raining gold portable forge Gargantuan Resolve. Dryad Emblem. Another NAR reroll. That, that would make it two games in a row we've seen NAR reroll. NAR Kindred. That'd be cool. Players from eight teams. One team had eight people involved. Oh my god. Wait, the guy has NAR 3? It's 3-3. Three, three. What the heck? This guy has NAR3 Kindred 1. <laughs> what the heck? That's ridiculous. That's such an early NAR. <gasps> the double spat. Oh, God. Okay. Dude, this carousel is such hijinks, man. Like, what is this? No, oh, man. It's like it's like a it's like a tactician's count on an Annie. So imagine you're playing Fortune. You're playing Fortune and you just see double spat on Annie. Like, come on, man. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I don't think they would find a better job. Yeah, I, I, I don't know enough about the economic state either, so I can't even really say. Honestly, reading into more pe people's situations in poorer parts of the world than America, it gives me a really big appreciation for what's going on here. I wouldn't say I'm the wealthiest person by any means. I, I'm actually, like, even relative to... Uh, other tft people but uh i think i have enough to survive and i'm happy I'm, I, I'm really happy to like be where i am i think I've, I've been watching a little bit of content from this tiktoker who interviews old people it went viral on twitter so i started checking out some of this content he asked a bunch of different successful people and old people different questions but like one of the series he likes to do is uh ask old people what they would tell themselves like at a younger age and i just find that stuff interesting i guess because i like interviewing people right i'm like a host and a personality so i like watching other people do stuff to learn from their craft maybe i can pick up something and uh almost all of them just basically say like the most one of the most important things is just to want what you already have and you'll never be unhappy and i thought that that really stuck with me <clears throat> i mean it's just another way of just trying to reframe your mindset to just like generally not try to be in an overly materialistic and greedy mindset but it's just like nice to have those kinds of uh, small little refreshments or reminders, refreshers rather, uh, to be happy about life. Want what you already have. That way you'll, you will never be unhappy. And so you know what? I want to be Grandmasters. <laughs> Who cares about Challenger? 
No, I'm just kidding. I, I'll get you, Drew, eventually. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a, it's a really good lesson. <clears throat> this guy's going to go for double dry at him, by the way. Dude, he got... He got dropped a double Titans. Too healthy. Too healthy, Kaisa. Crazy. You think they can revert all the Yone nerfs but make his range scale two cast? Oh, per two cast. I mean, they could. That'd make him even more inconsistent than usual. Also, doesn't that kind of make it that you position always towards the center so that way Yone either casts like Yone never hits the back center then because he always hits the corner. I guess that kind of depends. I don't know. Wow, lucky gloves plus sleight of hand. Amazing. Amazing. A boom. The boom. Uh, if you have a setup for boom, it's really, really good. I actually really like boom for kindred. Obviously, it's broken on Aphelios because it's bugged. Also, the patch notes did not say that they were fixing that on Aphelios, so it might just be a permanent feature at this point. Heavenly Emblem and Yone 2. Well played. Irelia, Irelia, Kane, Heavenly. Oh my gosh. Dude, this Lissandra popped off. Potted? I'm surprised this Narboard hasn't been rolling people over. I guess no Bloodthirster. No second Dryad Emblem. We're stuck on four Dryad. He pushed levels. If you can find a Zir and get six Dryad, I'm pretty sure his board is very strong. Also, the rest of his board is on upgrade. He has Rek'Sai 1. Rek'Sai 1, Thresh 1, Alawi 1, Syndra 1, Shen 1. So that actually makes... Or not Shen 1. Uh, Aatrox 1? Everything's 1 star except for his Nar 3. Oh. And he picked Hedge Fund and rolled to 0. Yikes. Also, Nars to Ange, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Or Trick Shot, three in Shadow. Kaisa pair. So he has Kaisa two. Another Kaisa two. Man, it feels like two Kaisa players, two Yone players, a uh a, a Nar player and uh I feel like actually it feel it feels like there's three Yone players. Am I missing it? Dude, have the lobby just playing the same thing? Kha'Zix, is this the Kha'Zix uh, level one? Oh, it is, it is. It costs three to level instead. Oh, wow. 
但其实他如果选择吃几波力气，然后这波来一个螳螂，我直接生死了。Dude, this is a whack lobby. The fact that everyone kind of play the same tree. Six dryad, okay, okay. Six dryad, we hit, we hit. Six dryad, three Kaisa players. Okay, is Edge of Night not that bad? He's been greeting really, really hard for BT. Oh my god. One Kindred. Oh, what? Such a... He keeps losing. I think, I'm pretty sure this dude lo lost every single fight this stage. He was so far ahead in HP, and he lost every single fight. Heavenly. Heavenly Kane, probably just gonna die. 11 HP. I mean, these kinds of spots, you need to hit two star pretty quickly. He's stuck on one star. Wait, he has a two star Lissandro. What? He has a two star Lissandro with a tech distance crown. He probably didn't expect to hit two star Lissandro, so he just put the tech distance crown for stats. But I think if I was him, I would really wish that she had a third item. Tactician's crown, Lissandra 2. Interesting. The Radiant, <clears throat> the Radiant item is Radiant Shojin on Zaya. Just have her cast repeatedly. Okay, we have a Senna 3 player. That's the 100 HP Shrieken with Lucky Gloves. Oh my god, what was that damage? Wait a second, Shen 3 wins these? Shen 3 wins these? Oh my god. You get a 5 cost for, th for a few rounds? You got set? So he gets free Umbral? Okay. This lobby is kind of kind of wacky. This guy got set for his uh, five costs, so he has an extra ward in. Kindred got Zephyr. That's not good. It's all about how far fast Nar can get to the front line. Also, if Nar gets potted. Uh oh, Sandra's targeting the Nar. Oh no, she changed targets. She changed targets. Nar! He got potted. No! That's such a big deal. Oh my god. We're on the wrong side. Also, Zephyr diff. Oh man. He. This guy hit Nar 3 on 3 3 and went 7th. Dude, that hedge fund at 4-2 was so bad. Uh, it, it, he, he didn't hit anything off of that. He was just down a prismatic. That was crazy. I'm pretty sure if you hit an R3 on 3-3, you should convert that to top 4 like a good amount of times. That, that's a wasted high roll. Feels bad. Dude, it really is. Three Yone players, three Kaisa players, one Senna, and one Nar player. That's that's what this lobby was. That lobby's so weird. All the Yone players are dying. Fade Emblem, Porcelain Emblem. How often does hedge fund and roll it down work? Um, how often does it work? Uh, I, I, I couldn't tell you, but the stats on it are kind of mediocre for a reason. A lot of people take it out of desperate situations and they do not hit. If you look at the overall stats on hedge fund, <clears throat> it's not particularly super impressive. That's because a lot of people take it and they miss. Oh, wait, what's Frodo doing? Did he go 8th or did he go 7th? I think he went 7th. I think he went 7th. The NAR player, NAR reroll player. Hey, Nemo, thank you for the raid. Hope you had a great stream. 
Welcome, Nemsco viewers. We're watching the China finals of the first competitive event for TFT. Our competitive season has officially started. After this, we're going to be watching a bunch of players try to improve their rankings on ladder in order to qualify for the, the finals of the first tournaments. Competitive season is about to get started, so we're currently in the middle of watching it. We're currently in the middle of watching it. Uh, and right now, uh, China is considered to be the best region alongside North America. That's right. NA is good at a game. And we're pretty good at, at chess as well, right? But uh, North America being good at a riot-based game, that's kind of new. We, uh, we're, we're, we're in the middle of watching China, the second best region alongside North America. North America is the reigning world champion. See uh, what they have to offer. So we're watching some TFT tournaments. That's kind of what I, that's, that's kind of my shtick. I just watch a lot of tournaments. He wasn't in a desperate situation. You don't know, actually. The thing about the thing about the augment at 4-2 is in those situations, you have to figure out what is the priority for you to, to stabilize. And he thought that if he got 40 gold, how much does Hedge Fund give you? He's like 40 gold. He thought if he got 40 gold, he'd be able to level roll and then maybe hit something to help stabilize on the Dryad. But he took he took a long time to get his Dryad emblem online. And then he took a long time for him to even stabilize his board by hitting two stars. And so he bled so much HP. It's arguable that he should have rolled more on seven before going to eight, which I think a lot of people, uh, a lot of people when they high roll, their their openers, they think they shouldn't do anything else. Like if you high roll, like you know your your three star nar, you think you're not your your state. That's to be good enough for you to get to level eight. Sometimes you have to roll at seven still. I've been watching the candidates. No, I haven't had much time because the baby is almost here. My wife is eight months pregnant. We're expecting very soon. Our timetable is actually moving up. Uh, the baby is bigger. Uh, the big the baby has my head. My head. I was I was actually a very big baby. I was nine pounds, and so uh, the baby inside my wife's belly is also uh, three weeks bigger than expected. So we might have we might have the baby come a little bit earlier. But yeah, big ass baby. Hello, sir. Mind if I join a yap? Yeah, absolutely. Dish soap TFT. You're going to be joining us in a second here. All right. I'm going to join my co stream channel. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yeah. What's up, dish soap? What's up? What have you been up to? Uh, not playing the patch. Not much. Not, not playing TFT. <laughs> what do you do when you're not playing TFT for the most part? Uh, I don't know. I usually, I mean, I, I, I spent uh, this break just uh, I mean, I hung out with my family a couple days. Um, sat around watching YouTube videos. Uh, I don't know, just random stuff. <laughs> what do you, what does your family do to hang out? Do they watch sports? Do they play games? Do they just eat food? Like, what what, what does your family do to hang out? Um, I don't know. I just went over to their house for dinner a couple times. Got it, got it. Oh, oh, you live separately from them. Yeah, but like, it's like thirty minute drive. Oh, okay, that's not bad at all. Okay, uh, what do you think about the patch, the upcoming patch? Oh, I mean, it's uh, like it's probably not going to be very balanced, but I'm <laughs> excited to play on it. <laughs> because it because of the changes, or because you just don't want to play this patch anymore. Both. Uh, both. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, you love you're a four cost lover, right? So I think that's yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, like my I mean I'm actually anticipating like a really poorly balanced patch, but I'm probably gonna have more fun on it. Okay. I don't know. I, I don't think a patch has to be balanced for me to have fun on it, to be honest. I think that's actually the dirty secret of a lot of TFT players. They actually don't want... They were, it's not that they don't want balance, it's that balance isn't as bit important to them as they make it seem to be sometimes. Oh yeah, but balance is like... I, I, I don't know if it's fake, but like... I feel like, like a perfectly balanced patch isn't even that fun. 
I mean, that's kind of what some people said about sub 10. It might be balanced, but they, they didn't really enjoy it that much by the end of it. At least that's what some people who were criticizing sub 10 were saying. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've... Okay, well, actually, this game is a pretty bad example of it, but we've been seeing a lot of Gnar and Kindred rise up more. I don't know if you've been watching or been seeing some of that, but I'm curious if, if you have, what are your thoughts on that? Man, I'm oh, getting I mean, more thought than good. I, like in my mind, it was just always like extremely situational. But it seems like people are finding the spots for it more and more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is a six ghostly summon board. This person started off with like a hundred HP. It looked like he was gonna hundo the lobby, and now has been losing out ever since to the Yone and Heavenly players. Oh wait, the Yone players all cannibalize each other, so it's just one Yone player, one Kaiser player. Peace of Schmidt, thank you for three months. And then Yone 2. Oh, wait. Sterix Gage, Gunblade. Oh, my God. I mean, it, this is like uh, combat power Yone versus like the Lucky Gloves uh, sleight of hand. So it's like no combat augments. But I'd be very surprised if this Sunday player got third. Yeah, oh. I don't know. The stats actually don't like boom, boom that much in Yone. That's the prismatic he has. But like anecdotally, it just seemed like very powerful. So in your experience, what makes this so powerful? Uh, even though the stats don't like it. Oh, I, I don't know. It's usually just like if you have items in Kindred, she pops up with it. Kane has like almost full time with it. And it makes you want like kill anything on second cast. Got it. It just makes the, it makes the team effort like a lot better. So just the Yone show. Yeah, but like for it to probably like be good, you probably already have to have like a bunch of extra items. Yeah, yeah that makes stuff. sense. That makes sense. Zaya two, Kaisa two. Rolling for Yone. Oh, I actually hear I actually see a, a disturbing amount of people actually just start with three Yones and hit Yone three on nine before. <laughs> uh this twenty five percent odds thing is uh surprisingly pretty high. Okay, let's see if this Senna... Oh, Senna is getting wiped by the trick shot. Oh, we're same side as the trick shots. That is dicey. Yeah, I didn't see the full game, but this is like this type of Senna board is a board you can have with like stage five. So it's just not much you can like, like not, not that much you can do to make it stronger. Uh, Yeah, he pushed levels and found legendaries and it still wasn't that good i guess it's just like the, the ghostly is just like a high tempo board for the most part so well it's expected it falls off to some of these high power level stuff a lot of time you actually run into the issue where like your senna either gets like hit by aoe and just dies mm -hmm. or your front line just gets blown up because yeah i mean it, it's like it's very much a uh like a defensive win con kind of comp yeah that makes sense do you ever build healing on? Is is healing useless on Sunday? You think, even though because she, she gets tagged by this AOE stuff. Uh, I'm not. I, I don't think it's very good. It seems like she she usually needs like, like like all offense. Yeah. Yeah, actual, actual damage to kill something. Honestly, I also don't know. I don't think Omnivamp works on ghostly damage, but I could be wrong on that. As in the bonus damage that you get from the specters don't count towards healing. Yeah, that's my like. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm kind of just speaking out of my ass, but like that's my assumption. Okay. Just based on like observing fights and stuff. <sighs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Oh, what? Did anybody know what the portal is for uh, who can read Chinese? It looks like it's. It looks like it's like an augment related one, like like a like prismatic prelude or something. The best way to keep us and alive in that comp is usually just like. I don't know, something like Martyr or uh, like sometimes Keepers as well. Oh, Keepers. Interesting. Or like Epitaph, just like one of those like generic defensive augments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, this guy is not going to buy a... Okay, he is. He is going to buy a Caitlyn, I think. What do you think about... Uh... Uh, the uh, other parts of the patch, though. What do you think about like the damage changes uh, and things like that sort? 
Oh, I, I mean, it's like my actual take is is gonna be like give it like a week, and it's extremely like degen fortune. <laughs> okay, yeah, probably at, at high elo. Like, uh. oh, oh, it is prismatic. No, I'm just gonna go ahead and just guess that's what it is. Uh, Reaper Crown. Oh, dude, no one really takes March of Progress anymore. I feel like I haven't seen that augment very often. Oh, this guy takes it. Yeah, I pre-leveled for that as well. Interesting. Not sure how that changes the intervals, but it does change them. Fortune Crown. It's fortune cheesing. He's going to do the... This guy has 20 gold. He's going to do the fortune cheese of like trying to put in fortune. Well, he put it onto the ribbon and put and, and, and played her, but he had the option too. Birthday present. Surprisingly, something that people pick uh, more often than you think with birthday present because they just like to push levels and try to play around for like a fast nine. Maybe you hit like the, 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 the big five cost that you really need. Stabilize. Yeah, I mean, it's probably like a lot better next patch. Um, uh, birthday present. Oh, I like what Shucks is in, ch in chat. Birthday present has good encounter outs. Which, uh, that is true. There are encounters that help birthday present by making it cheaper to level. That is true. I is mean, true. does it really? That's like... Kha'Zix? Yeah, but there's like, what, like 16 counters in the game? How, like, how many of them? I mean, I guess there's just stuff that gives you money. Yeah, that is true. I don't know. I, I mean, I guess technically you're not wrong. <laughs> when you say that you have encounter outs. Because encounters just give you a bunch of stuff all the time. March progress. Tattoo of protection. So it looks like it's going to be... Uh, at least angling towards Senna. I don't. I don't know if there's anything else that you would play besides that with a tattoo and this kind of setup. Really, so, uh, let's see here. Oh, this is th this is the fucking this is the Mortog uh, support dummy. Oh, this does not feel very good. It feels like two of the worst ones, or is it the yeah. two worst ones? You think? Oh no, I've hit this like twice playing Yone. Like the last two times I played Yone. <laughs> and what what you play in those games? Uh, like eight seven. Oh God! Oh, was was that was was this is what happened during Soju's event? Yeah. yeah. Oh Just, God! Like a lot, a lot of a lot of stuff like that. Oh man. I feel like I feel like uh two uh the the stationary support two is way riskier than stationary stationary support one because you can just get like terrible combos. I don't know if you feel uh, if agree or disagree with that. Oh, I mean, the the stats like disagree like with that a lot. Like it loves to share support too, but like, it, like there's a couple there's a couple more dog ones. Like I mean, pretty much anything with Chalice, you're pretty upset. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's the thing. It, it feels like the combination volatility is so high, but uh, yeah, the stats do tend to make it look good because I think I think the spikes on it are so high if you get like the really good ones. Yeah. Am, am I crazy? Like, didn't there used to be like Omnivamp on Chalice, or like, was that? Am I misremembering? Because I'm not for them to bring that back. They did have a patch where Chalice at one point gave Omnivamp. I, I do think so. I don't. I don't remember what, remember what it was, but they don't. They don't. I think it was when they changed it to give starting mana. They might have had it different. They may have changed the stats then. I'm not for Omnivamp Chalice. I think like Zeke's also using him Omnivamp as well. I don't remember. Maybe it was like Radiant Chalice, Radiant Zeke's. Oh, actually, actually, it might be Radiant, yeah. It might be. Did you see Snoopy Boo's clip where he lost to an Annie 3 with 3 Star Lee Sin and 8 Duelist? I mean, Annie 3, isn't 3 Star Annie really insane? Oh, yeah, that, that one's broken. Do you, do you guys know that 3 Star Annie is so busted that Chin there's a Chinese content creator that literally did a 1v1 bracket? They had three star legendaries across the board. Uh, and they had Annie three go to the toe, and it was actually kind of close with some of the Annie fights. <laughs> and Annie, Annie, she actually went toe to toe with a couple of the, the three star legendaries. Oh, I see, I see those videos on my YouTube shorts. It's just uh, like three star four costs and three star five costs going yeah. against each other. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> 
Buried treasures. Four streak. What is this spot? Story Weaver. It's probably. I mean, if he if he can skip the nine, he can go nine. But mm -hmm. it seems like he might just play Jana. Oh yeah, because you have the chalice. Level up. Level up also really good with so much econ. He's at 93 HP, 50 gold. Level up. Really strong start. How does he? I think it's because a couple people are playing Fortune. There's so many loose streak players. So this person got kind of gets away with like no streak and uh, still maintaining a lot of HP with a ton of econ. I think this is like one component opener as well. So like everyone's going to be really, really rich. True. That's probably why I took birthday present. That makes sense. That makes sense. Exalted Ash. I was talking to Ramblin. Ramblin thinks that uh, Ash is semi playable on certain Exalted patterns. This patch, that's one of his findings. I'm not sure if you've uh, discovered any of that, but I thought that was interesting when he said it. Oh, Ash is like. I don't know. Ash like somewhat enables your Lissandra too. Okay. <laughs> um. That's yeah. Uh, that's really all I can say about her. Sure, sure. Okay, like like I make fun of like it's not that bad. It's just like it's like it's just a really suspicious game plan to have. Oh yeah, um, I think so for sure. I I personally have not found much success with Ash. The only time I've ever found success with Ash is when she is like the third priority, right? Like you're 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 uh, you have two faded emblems and you have like you know one on Orn or like one on Ash or if you're playing like wandering trainers and you hit port double porcelain emblem then you can like start playing on ash stuff like that okay has a shen 2 yeah i think the one game of ash i went first with i had like double wandering it was like two porcelain one warden spot off of just like the the dummies mm -hmm. and i think there's like a sniper emblem in there as well and it was like I still had to like work to get my uh my first. <laughs> like, so you had it, the it, it broken was, start, was, and you still had to, it was still a struggle. It was a hard fought first. <laughs> oh man! Oh my god! This guy hit tiny titans in the fortune. Oh, but he didn't put the fortune in because he won this fight. Oh, it's Juan May. Wow! So he didn't lose his streak. He, he sorry, he, he lost his his lose streak. But he maintained his fortune streak. And he has Tiny Titans as well. Beast. I mean, I actually think he had five fortune. He actually didn't play it just to uh, not, like, just so he could never get griefed. Right, right. And now that the that's person's like, out of the pool, he's putting it all back in. That, that, that's a uh, respectable play. And text the fortune in just so he can get the HP healing as well. Because it, it's, it's, it's at the very beginning of the fight, right? Yeah. Come. The thing is, if you try to play, if you play Five Fortune, you, you like it's not really a cheese anymore. What do you mean by you, that? Like, like if you if you attempt to play Five Fortune, you don't have the option of taking out Fortune. Oh, oh, right. You can't toggle it anymore. That makes yeah, yeah, of course. Oh my God, the Wu Kong one. Oh man, this one's up there for some of the most complained about uh, carousels. Wu Kong um, drops a rating item. This is like bot five encounter. Yeah. Where where, where are the other bot fives? Uh, ones in bot five. Uh. I think the the York one's pretty bad. Reroll? Honestly, like literally, <laughs> both both reroll and the oh and, the level and seven the, uh, <laughs> yeah level seven at the start. Okay. Um, Lilia's pretty trash. Lily is the random augments one. Yeah, r random random augments. Okay. Um, I don't know. I can't really remember. It's one more. But... What about what about the spatula? Timo spatula carousel. Okay, that one's. I actually think that one is fine. The thing is, sometimes like it can like roll like two spatulas in the same one, which yeah, is not yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, okay. But yeah, I don't know. Some people also really don't like other stuff like Kha'Zix because it just feels like y you're just like you, you leveled and you spent all your gold and other people did not. Things like that. Okay, I, 
My hot take is I don't think that one's that bad. I don't think that one's that, that bad either, but I, I know some people complain about it a lot. Like, okay, like, I'm not, I'm not saying it's, like, good for the game. Like, I definitely understand, like, all the complaints to it, but, like, I feel like there's, like, more stuff you could be bitching about <laughs> than Kha'Zix. Like, I, I don't know if Kha'Zix is enemy number one. Oh, he's definitely not. I, I also have kind of a hot take that I think uh, some of these encounters that are bad are good because they're like a lightning rod for hate. Because uh, it, it, it like helps you feel these extreme emotions so that you could ri so that so that way you have like the full spectrum of feelings on TFT because it's going to be things that you really love. Like people love the Malphite encounter one. So like suffering through all these miserable uh, encounters also makes you love the the good ones like a lot more too yeah i don't know if i agree with that but like i mean i don't like i mean i definitely have felt that there are good, like yeah good, no there's there's good encounters man there's actually good ones I, I i think there's a lot of fun encounters like i talked about the malphi one being good i like the treasure army ones actually i think those are fun uh there's also there's, so, there's also some ones that have like interesting trade-offs uh, assuming that they're equally balanced as opposed to gain a million gold or, or, or get a two cost. Okay, we're rolling down. Wait, we pivot away. Trash to treasure. A lot of trash to treasure is almost always Kaisa, but this person looks like they're playing Zoe. I can't tell actually. 48 on the fortune. They're holding a oh, bunch I of trick shots on the bench. I think he wants to play Kaisa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he just he just he just has the Zoe units on the board. Oh my god, yeah. perfect loss, perfect win. Oh, he didn't cross the fifty threshold. That's a big deal. Oh, Loki, Loki. Some of the forties are a lot better. Like, there's half, half of the fifties are worse than the forties. It's uh, it's kind of troll. Oh, you think so? Yeah, there, there's there's one of them that gives you an orange GG, which is trash, and then there's another one that basically just gives you raw gold. And, and like all the forties are pretty good. Radiance TG, that's pretty good. Like you could get that cash out, but instead of a radiant TG, you would just have a like an orn an orn TG, but like with like twenty more gold or something. Like you would you would spend twenty gold to turn your orn TG into a radiant TG. True, but I also feel like in this spot we might need twenty gold as well. Nah, nah, nah don't worry. It's oh, we did hit we did hit Zaya. We did hit Zaya. Okay. Wait, is this uh? Is this a reforge on Zaya? I don't think so. Okay. I'm surprised he's giving Zanyas, but maybe it's just good in the sloppy. Okay. I mean, I guess he just doesn't want to reforge. Like, you, you can't really reforge any items besides, like, Guardbreaker, I guess. But like, Guardbreaker's fine. You definitely want to keep Manazane. Manazane's, like, really good. Yeah, yeah, Manazane's really good, for sure. I guess I was just confused, because I, I don't really see a lot of Zonias on units like Kaisa. Or, sorry, units uh, like Zaya. The galley has radiant stone plate though. He's really souped. Ninety-six. Oh, he got the all thieves. I mean, okay, well, this one is this one's ridiculous. He just gets four thieves gloves. Radiant yeah, thieves gloves, support thieves gloves, horn thieves gloves. This one is amazing, but like this is one of the like he can't really utilize it on his board right now and it looks like he's trying to go nine uh yes he is trying to go nine i think he didn't roll wow these zoe items not bad and even the timo items as well wow okay uh, his tg ended up being really good all these fortune players are are, are, are trying to are crushing a lot of the matchups also, it looks like there's like four Kaisa players. I don't think the TG one's like the strongest one, but it's probably like one of my favorite cash outs like they've ever done. Just like the in magic, general. like the, the in terms of like what the rewards are. I think the funniest one is the set and the the target dummies one. I think it was super funny. It's a lot of people complain about it, but every game that either I've seen people get it or I've gotten it, that person still wins the lobby. But people do complain about it. They think it's pretty bad. Aegis. 
he's not going to nine now he's still poor and he also won his previous fight so we can sack this one plus the next uh encounter might change some things i mean he should be any non-fortune boards okay this person has one star morgana and one star senna that's our carry purple econ on econ start as well level nine probably like more than 50 gold yeah is he trying to fast 10 for sure oh god i don't know when the last time you fast 10 especially in these kinds of lobbies but that seems really ambitious yeah not without fortune cash out all right we'll see he's sacking a couple of rounds Phillies drops two component anvils for you. Okay, let's see it. This is actually really huge, so you can get items onto the Galio. Uh oh. That Titans. One last hurrah. Do you think the Titans nerf is warranted? Yeah, but like just cause, like it, the item is not even good they just like printed the two best 10 users of, of all time the set Volvo uh, and yone volley and yone yeah like, like this this item has been like high key underpowered for like a few sets now right, and right. you don't see anyone build it on anyone besides volley yone yeah yeah so, i was just saying like outside of reroll like who actually ends up building it uh not really many units i, I mean leeson should build it but like um people are just aren't really building leeson period so it, it's probably still one of his better items next patch. Man, Lee Sin, pe when people play Lee Sin and itemize him early, like from like in tempo's positions, he actually just destroys a lot of stage two and stage three. If you give him like the BT Titans early, you get him. I'm, I'm actually very afraid of Lee Sin next patch. If someone hits an early Lee, I feel like he's just going to dominate. But I'm not sure because maybe they nerfed Titans and it's not that not that good on him. I don't know, but like Titans was pretty much trash all of last set as well. So I hope they uh, look at the item in future sets. Mort said so that they really aren't there. happy with where the item is currently, so we'll see. This guy's one for this guy's rolling for uh, Senna three at eight. Twenty five percent odds. Missed. Man, I'm surprised it's just not swapping. Like, like I would just like swap to the Kaisa as soon as I hit the Kaisa two, and then stop rolling. Yeah, but it seems like he might just be holding them to grief and going for Senna and S10. I don't know. Well, half the lobby is going for Kaisa, so that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I I love holding Kaisa to grief or Kaisa's to grief. Guy's dead. One Kaisa player down. Was that one of the Fortune players? I don't think so. I'm looking at fortune cash outs. What's the rating conversion under 175 luck? I think that is turn all your items into radiant items. So like on this board, it would turn everything except the jewel gauntlet into a radiant version of it. I believe that's what it does. Azir 2. We've been seeing a couple of this uh, so far throughout the weekend, which is some people just play around Azir AP and just say like and kind of go back to the old version of Azir Hui but not really around Hui at all it's like Azir plus anything else you hit so Azir what? like Dragon Lord 5 cause lots of yeah yeah just, just play value board for the most part that's what actually won the lobby uh, I think in this, the last game a guy took hedge fund and like giga greeted and hit Azir 2 really early and then uh yeah, just played around. Azir, five cost Dragon Lord. Mazir gets too much hate. He uh he, he's like more item dependent than I think people may realize, but like he's he's pretty good. As in you have to have the right items on him? Yeah, like you can't just like have like the random if he flex like Morello Shiv adaptive on him and expect him to to pop off. He, he's kinda like like he's kind of a one-shot thresholdy kind of dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, his, his damage, his numbers are actually really impressive. If you actually just put AP on him and just look at it, he, it just shows like he does a lot of damage. So, 
Yeah, you, you just want like pure AP and like maybe a Shojun. I played a game today where I had some pretty suboptimal uh, items on him, but I put two tat I put tattoos on him because I was playing like a seven ink shadow setup, and he actually did so much work. So I was very impressed by that as well. He has the worst targeting at five cost has ever had. You're not wrong, actually. This guy is also hyper inconsistent with the the way he targets for sure. Oh man. Yeah, he goes Edge of Knights. Oh, this is the Senna player. I sold the Kaisa. Uh, wait, 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 why? He's, he's like Bartok Progress. It's not even like going to stop his level 9. Can't even level. Maybe maybe he sold it to roll down more. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe the Kaisa players died or something. Like, There's still a couple. There's at least two alive, I feel like. This is Juan May's uh, AP is Yearborn. Double Lissandra. Double Lissandra 1. With uh, full items. Well, I guess it's Orn TG. Actually, that makes sense. I feel like uh, TG, the, the Orn Beast Gloves would be good on uh, Lissandra in particular. I mean, you get the Gold Orn Mover with this cash out, so you can... You can optimize like, it. It, it, yeah. it makes the Orn TG so much better because like, you don't have to have like collector mana zane on your silas or something right 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 oh lissandra 2 good stuff i mean he's making it work i like it oh wait never mind it's another wait what, three people are playing ap uh ap level nine boards wow that's unusual Altruist Sage. I haven't seen this board since the beginning of the set. Okay, this guy must have like infinite streaked early game because this board is not very this good. <laughs> yeah, level zero. What the heck is this? He's bot four. Oh no, the other guy lost. Oh my god. Okay, like, he, he cruised to a top four, or bleeds like that, to, that, led to a top four rather. That was like the biggest like garbage board probably was streaking the entire <laughs> game I've seen. <laughs> Four Altruist, three Sage. I mean, it's, it, ever since they nerfed Altruist, it doesn't even feel like as good to get the, the four Altruist as it did before. I don't know. When you're stuck on level eight, playing around in random bullshit, nothing really feels that good. So, uh, I mean, getting a top four feels nice. Is Morgana even a unit? Well, they're buffing her again next patch. They're buffing not just her HP, and but they're buffing her attack speed. Um, double Archangels. Well, maybe this Morgana will deal some damage. Copium. Diana 3. Diana 3 is really big for that board, but probably still not going to do better than 4th. Pops Anvils. TGs. Yeah, I think Kwame hit Critical Mass. Nice. Doesn't one star Heavenly Malphite give as much armor and MR as the third altruist? Uh, yeah. You're talking about like uh, the upgrade from two to three altruists, right? Like, like it does, but like it's a Malphite, so. so ma yeah. Well, also, a lot of times when you're playing the third altruist, unless you're getting Rakan, it, it could also be kind of sus. But yeah. Why is he positioning Kaelin? I think he wants the Kaelin to intercept certain, like just be clump and also maybe intercept things like the Udir. You never know. Udir sometimes run through and then grabs a target. Maybe he grabs a Kaelin instead. Dude, Juan May is going to win this lobby. Woo! Wow. Absolute gas. I think Kaisa went uh, three, six, seven, eight or something like that. It was, should be the last fight of this game. He's going for Kane 3. Ah, uh, big whiff, big whiff. Oh, he hit. Oh, he hit. I mean, these are these canines are pretty terrible. I don't think he's going <laughs> to. 
I don't think he's going to do it, but it'll be fun to see him try. Also, there's a Lissandra on the other side. Okay. Well, that was fun, I guess. Nice job. Dude, look at how hyper efficient these Chenevas are. They don't even let the game finish. Like, like I said, they don't even wait for the body to get cold. They just immediately move on to the next game. Oh, that's that's not like when you skipping it. It's just it's just already uh, cut. Yeah, they, they, they just pre cut it. Okay, this is upgraded champion. All right, I'm gonna put on. I like listening to see the the Chinese commentators get a little bit hype over stuff. <laughs> Upgraded champion. Upgrade. Oh my god, Darius 2. Are you going to stick around for uh, to see some of the snapshot stuff? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Although I don't I'm not sure if there's that much. Yeah, like, like, I don't I feel like anyone's streaming it. Even if there were people playing. I mean, Soju's playing right now, but uh, we'll have to take a look at the cutoff. Rain is streaming. Oh, sick. That's good to know. We can watch some of that. Titans. Faded emblem. Ooh, slamming. One last rodeo. Get some slamming EXP during PV rounds. I think he's going for it. Idealism. Idealism usually lends yourself to like playing around melee carry type stuff. But I wonder if he has anything else up his sleeve. But did you play idealism into Yone? Oh, wrath oh, of the moon. Took the oh, what the heck? I feel like I feel like you take this augment if it gets you Darius too, but he has an extra Darius, so I mean he might have just hit it in the shop. True, true. And I mean it also gives you the Yorick, which is relevant. That is true. That's I don't know. I, I'm actually like really curious to see what he does with this, because I think this augment's effect is actually like really, really, really good. It's just uh doesn't really fit in the board you want to play. Right. And I'm uh a lot of the umbral units fall off really hard so it feels like do you even want to play around like four umbral in the mid game or do you just play around two maybe just two yeah i mean probably only gonna play four when you get like silence or something um yeah like i'm just like i i just uh curious if he plays like two umbral yone if he because I, I and i also think the, the augment might work with zero umbral like just the effect on like the your one yone Oh, I see. So it turns into like a like a miniature hero augment. Just uh, just buff your Yone. Yeah, but he also might just put like six Umbral or something. I don't know. I'm actually pretty curious. Fascinating. Because uh, I don't know. I just stopped clicking this augment as soon as like I changed Yone versions. The stats on it are kind of poor, which is I think why people stopped picking it. But you you still like it? Though. You, you think his effect is powerful? Yeah, I mean the the effect. Like I mean. Yeah, the effect is powerful. I, I don't like taking it though, it, like just because of it's so awkward. <laughs> it's it's kind of like the same thing as like boiling point. Like that effect is broken, but it's like Loki kind of held in check. Not really, but like I like the first patch. How has Juan May placed in other games? I think he got seventh in the first game and he just won his previous games. I th I don't remember what happened in the second game. I think um. I think it was like a fourth or a third or something like that. So he's up there. I believe the winner of this cup gets a spot at regionals. So you want to just win the cup. It's a really big deal if you can. Dude, I feel like regionals is going to be really hard to make this set for a lot of people with all the format changes. Probably not, probably not necessarily for like you, if you feel like you're still in a really good spot to make it through ladder, but 
I, I feel like people are, especially today, they're starting to recognize how difficult it is going to be qualified. Like, Milk told me he's giving up already on going to regionals this set. He said he's going to be back set 12. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know why he expects the format to change next set. Maybe he just hopes he high rolls early. No, I think he means that he, he didn't realize that... Okay, so his plan was to come back set 11, and he thought the format was going to be sim similar to the previous sets. So he thought he could be casual about it and only play TFT like six hours a day instead of like 10 to 12 he, as he used to. And he said that he can't do that anymore. He says, so set 12, he'll come back and he'll like really try hard. He can't, he says you can't be a casual and make regionals anymore. <laughs> I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, but like... Uh, like the, I mean, I, I definitely agree. It's gonna be like I'm not worried about making regionals, but I think it's like gonna be a lot harder. Yeah, agreed. Um, because even if you miss this snapshot, it's uh like you have to play in a round of um five hundred five hundred yeah, like, players. That's just hard. Yeah, five five like five hundred players, six games. Like, like you could actually be you could actually be the real LeBron of TFT. And like, you could still be shaken. Oh yeah, it just takes like a couple of bad encounter games, and you're in big drub drub. Like these players, let's say you're playing on this meta, and look at just what happened. Someone get dropped two duplicators like this, and half the lobby took idealism and gargantuan resolve. Like, what are you gonna do, man? This, this, this yeah. is this is like a devastating situation to be in if you're like a player who's who is supposed to be like a cut above other players in an open qualifier. I am shocked. He, uh, with what he was holding there. Uh, who? This player? Yeah, he didn't make 20, and he could have sold Trist or Yasuo pair. Oh. And he also could have just not played Soraka. Like, if he really wanted to hold the all the duel set up. Yeah, he should have sold Soraka. I think I think I I think I understand why he held his uh, Tristana for the duelist, but yeah. Oh, never mind. This guy's a beast. Oh, wait a second. What do we have here? Oh, weird. Oh, interesting. <laughs> oh, he sold his Yones because he wanted to commit to Volibear Bear for Duelist. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that, this is like kind of kind of a reason why I'm okay with selling Yasuo because usually you want to get out of him pretty early. Big dupe. Golden Nico, five story weaver, Shojin Morello, tier opener. Interesting. Why take the big dupe in this? Oh, because he's playing slamming. Got it. So he wants to play for round four cost. It might be just, it might just be Kaisa anyways. Shojin, last whisper Kaisa. And then just Morello, like frontline tier item. Also, I think G2 is like a Kaisa one trick. I wouldn't be surprised if you're still been to take lessers there. To go for like Zoe or Zara too. Yeah. Oh, what is going on? What is going on? This is this is disgusting. What is going on? Is everyone just getting gifted gargantuan resolve? Oh, oh, okay. Well, I was just gonna say the only thing that would make it slightly interesting is if some you guys offered something else that tempts him into umbral, but Okay, with that with that pick, my prediction is he's going to play no he's he's going to play zero umbral yone. And okay. just have the augment, like, just buff his Yone. That's I like my it. prediction. I like it. I think so as well. I've seen, uh, Yone, uh, Juan May was one of the early adopters to, like, you only play Heavenly Yone and every other version of Yone suck. And this was back when people were playing Umbral Yone still. Like, basically, uh, the beginning of the set. So, I, I, I would believe it. He is a Yone believer. Gage Titans. And of justice looks like another person hoarding duelists. We got a NAR reroll with two Fuck, healthy though. Five NARs. Okay. He rolled a ten. Oh my god. I mean, this is like a set eleven classic. If he, I mean, if he does well, like, I won't be angry. Not really, but just commits NAR into one and then lesser dupe encounter into two healthy. Yeah. And they rolled a 10 and then like sometimes hits NAR3 at... Okay, it's actually, the, the person that hit NAR3 at 3-3 two games ago went 7th. I think that was literally when you joined. 
Oh, I can see it. He just had like one star everything else. Yes, yes, goals. exactly, exactly. He had Nar, he had Nar three, Kindred one, uh, Aphelios one, Shen one, Rexai one, and then tried to fast eight and then died. Oh, that is like that is like actually like the biggest bit. Yeah. Of uh, any real comp, like you hit your carry early, your whole board is trash, and you think you're like stable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he he was he was stable, and then he stopped winning, and then he just died immediately afterward. Have you discovered any interesting tag from the CN tournament? L lots of small things I've picked up on. Uh, the 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 thing about China is that they approach things just more aggressively in general. Like their tempo is just higher, which is like a pretty standard thing. But every time I every time I see it, it's always surprising to me. Like they just all in so much earlier than I expect them to. They also play a lot more Nar and Kindred. There's there's been one every single lobby today. That's been interesting. That's actually been the fourth most popular comp behind Kaisa, Yone, and um, uh, Senna. Pushes luck. We rolled a one. What? The, oh, this guy's a this guy's a god. What the heck? I would not have pushed my luck there. I, I feel like the twenty cash out was fine to get the Orn Anvil, and he gets a he gets a one. I think it's fun to push because you have um he's 51 hp and, and he is annie so you can easily just be um five fortune okay and okay. like even if you roll a six you'll be alive with five fortune there if you like you either just try to win the last one or you get like good losses okay depending. okay so just uh just 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 try to win anyways the last round or two but if you roll, roll like if you're like a three or a four you're just hard chilling yeah okay i mean yeah for sure if, you, if you're able to get into the spot where you have like three i guess i, I guess i'm just I, I'm, I'm a wuss oh i mean usually in a spot like that you'd be like or like the average player would be like 40 hp with no five fortune so i think it's kind of different Fair but he catches that at 40 here because i think his board is actually kind of correct he has annie too that that should be very stable for stage four Man, and th those are two completed items? Yeah. Oh. Uh. Bloodthirster? Oh, BT Titans? Or is it. Is it Bramble? Pops the other anvil while putting a component on. I don't like that. Takes red buffs to make sure he has anti heal. Those are Kaisa items onto Zoe. So as predicted, that person, uh, Chitu, was going to try to angle into Kaisa anyways with slamming. Jazz Latte was coaching Emily the other day, and he was really big on Nar Kindred. That makes sense. That does seem to be like something that SCA really likes. In general, in North America, there, there's, it's not seen that often. Another Titans drop. Oh, hold there too. Oh, he's going for the Bis Bis. He wanted to put a Titans onto Volibear in case he got three uh, Titans that rolled onto it. Nice. He didn't get it, but I, I, I respect the attempt. True Bis Volibear is three Titans Resolve with Gargantuan Resolve. Is it always go fast eight and roll the fuck down if you want to play Kaisa? For the most part. I mean, in rare, ra in very rare instances, you could probably, uh, you could probably skip eight if you're like super duper high rolling. Like I've seen people play like really strong like ghostly boards and they just have they, they, like everything's fully upgraded and if they you know like Kaisa's not contested so they can just go straight to nine 
but like those are really rare instances i, I wouldn't say that that that, that happens even 10 percent time that's probably like five percent <throat> i have seen people actually uh skip playing kaisa entirely and just go straight into zaya because of how contested zaya is or kaisa is they just like roll they they, they roll and then they hit uh one kaisa and like one zaya and then they hit zaya two before kaisa two so they just carry zaya because there's just because yeah. kaisa is so contested I mean, that's what happens when uh, Kaisa is the clear best forecast and like no other forecast can compete for the most part. It's more about forecast carries because like Annie still does pretty well. Warren is, our, is pretty solid as well. Just, it's just forecast carries. How and why are they taking units off the board for their augments? Oh, uh, there's there's still a belief. I don't know if we have hard confirmation, but there's still a belief that your board state manipulates augments. Uh, if you put them, if you if you take them on, if you put them off or put them on during the augment selection screen. So let's say you have, uh, you know, you want to roll for faded, and you just put faded units in the board, like at and and then you roll your augments. Supposedly that should influence your ability to see like a faded augment. I don't know yeah. if that's a hundred percent confirmed, but that's there's belief in that. It, it does work. It's I don't know, like some sometime in like in the recent like sets like patches, it's uh they've rebugged it. Yeah. Okay. So the 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 uh the rumor that I heard the urban legend is that. For hero augments back in set eight, if you guys don't know what hero augments were, they're basically like Drop Blossom, Story Champion, and Midnight Siphon, Ethereal Blades of the, the, the basically empowering one specific champion. That was an entire set mechanic back in set eight a few sets ago. And what ended up happening was uh because they wanted hero augments to be relevant, instead of offering you random hero augments, it would always take a snapshot of your board the round before. So that way it would you would it would tailor your board and if you're playing like ink shadow or you're playing faded it would give you like a faded champion that has a hero augment and so the belief is that those are like leftover legacy rules that got removed when when they uh changed the system so now it it does read your board or something like that i don't know that's that's kind of a, the belief I, I think the timeline's pretty off but i, I don't really think it matters it's just uh I, I, I think, uh, I, I mean, I remember bitching about it during set nine, like that I had to uh, tailor my board. Uh, and then they, they like fixed it one of the patches in set nine, I think. And then it just got reintroduced. I don't know when. Maybe it was reintroduced last set. Okay. But, I have no idea, but. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really matter when it was reintroduced. I'm, it's confirmed to be working. So, hope they fix it. I think it's kind of annoying. Yeah, we're, we're not saying. If you're playing faded, you hit a faded crown. We're talking about if you're not playing faded on your board at the start of the augment selection screen, you choose to put faded onto your board during it and then and then reroll your augments, it should affect your augment rerolls. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, some sometimes people get like confused by that. It, like you don't ever get an increased chance to see an augment. It's just like a check of you can see it or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, by the way, this setup is just straight up crazy. This guy has Locket, Extended Duel, Duelist Crest, Gargantuan Resolve, Handpicked Augments and Items, and has a 3-star Volo Bear on Stage 4. Why did he lock his Lisa? It is so likely he gets 3 items on him. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's a good point, actually. Especially if you know that you're putting things like Morello on Tristana, you're gonna, you're, you're definitely gonna want to get items on, you know, it's like Lisa. This guy has three dupes. He's one Yone off. Oh, Yone three. Doesn't have bench space. Yeah, the uh, zero umbral umbral augment. Anything might level for Silas. For sure, it's not even stronger than like the standard, like level for Wukong or whatever. 
Oh god, and he queued into the old bear three duelist player. Wait, he actually might hit Yone three and then die. Oh, I, th I think Loki Yone could win this. Cause uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure the augment works. So he'd be getting like a lot of stacking bonuses. Okay, stunned. Oh, but he just reset the damage. No. Uh, oh, wait, he's living. He's no, he's not, he's not. Oh my god. Wait uh, a second. Oh, that's so devastating. I'm pretty sure his board was really good. Oh, no. I wonder if he clicks the augment again. Wrath of the Moon. I mean, he he was very close to stabilizing and like at least climbing back to like a fifth. I, I feel like that would have... I don't know if he like straight up wins out, but his spot was actually pretty good. No, I agree. What is this? Lockhead Aegis, Yone 2, 7 Heavenly with a Heavenly Emblem, getting blown up anyways because like, Kaisa just locked onto the Yone. You know what? I'm okay with it. All the Yone players just hold hands, 5, 6, 7, 8. <clears throat> I didn't get bashed. He struggled because the, the thing that counters some of these units that can heal up a lot is uh, locking them down with CC. You stun them, you pop them up, whatever, you, you Lissandra them, and they can't, they don't have the ability to actually heal up because they can't interact with anything. Okay, this is going to sound like a, a dumb question. It doesn't really have any effect on gameplay. What's that? But I don't, I, I don't like read the champion descriptions. Like, wh what does Kaisa do, like, thematic wise like like what is the what is the stuff she's shooting out ink isn't it oh oh I, I, yeah i was just like looking at the last fight it looked weird i just didn't know what it was yeah, i mean that's right that's what it looks like to me i mean that makes sense it's ink shadow i just yeah i didn't think about it yeah <laughs> uh, who's on the call dish soap aka the pp AKA, who do you call yourself of the TFT? You call yourself Jokic? Yeah, the Jokic of TFT. The Jokic of TFT. Who, 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 do you actually follow the NBA or no? Uh, yeah, not more like, I, I follow it less, like when I started like streaming a lot. Got it, but... got it. Well, Lowy three. Also, you like, did, did you just, who a Begalo Jokic? Oh man. How dare you? Oh wait, what is this? Throwback Aphelius reroll? I haven't seen this build in so long. Three star Amumu and Alawi playing three feet Aphelius. That variation hasn't been around since the beginning of the set. Okay, this variation it's not that bad, but it's like a Mumu three. Like oh, you, yeah. you need that guy. And also it's pretty bad. But the uh, I mean, Amumu, Amumu is actually kind of kind of amazing if you ever get to play around him. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure uh, Amumu is just straight up busted if you get the good setup for him. That's part of what makes like porcelain and the twin tear and everything like that really good. Also, I think these are crowd was stronger before they nerfed it, but that might might might, might have my time limits mixed up. Maybe they nerfed too healthy. That's what I'm thinking about. Okay, I know that guy had a rare buff on Teemo, but I am certain he's supposed to put Toxin on the Teemo as well instead of no items I won. Which guy? The guy we're watching right now? No, no, it was, it was a different guy. He had red buff, blue buff Teemo. He had Toxin, and he was putting it on no items I won instead of the Teemo. Mm. Like, I assume he was doing it to, like, spread anti heal better, but... Yeah. Oh, I, my I God. Think, I don't think you should care about that. Who wins? It's probably Umu 3. Wait a second. Oh. Never mind. I thought the, I thought Udir already uh, died, or rather didn't res yet. Nah, it's a Umu. He has ghostly on him. Oh. Dude, Umu is the goat. Zaya is so useless. No, no, Zaya is great actually. She's just fragile. But Zaya is great. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, I, I am certain this toxin is not supposed to be on the Zaya. Oh, yeah, sure. Everything else looks fine. I can get behind that. Uh, I, just, yeah. 
Man, I'm getting I, I, more dunked again. I would not be surprised again. if this Teemo is like 3xing the Zaya right now. And, Man, like, all I'm damage. getting more dunked again. Those Toxin. A B Bo, thank you for the Prime. And Bimbop 420, thank you for the Prime as well. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's just it's just the three item multiplier effect thing. And Teemo 2 still does a ton of work in these setups. Oh, he's going the opposite direction. I see. Yeah, I like actually really disagree with this, but. Ubo Silas? Oh, wow. Okay, let's see it. It depends on how much damage his eye can put out. His team was already dead, for what it's worth, but that was because of the positioning. Woodier 2 wins these. No, he does not. Which Woodier 2? Uh, you're right, actually. <laughs> I thought this guy had Udyr 1 with the Vitality and the Warmogs, but Vitality Warmogs is also a really nasty combo as well. <clears throat> Have you tried uh, Tattoo of Vitality on Irelia? Uh, no, but I, I heard a... Uh... I heard Rambo talking about it. It's probably good. Okay, if you get a chance, you should do Tattoo of Vitality with just... like I'm, The people put Warmogs on her, but just any kind of uh, HP stuff that can that can be really good on her. And uh, allegedly, it just pops off. I haven't got a chance to ever test it because whenever I have that situation, I just don't hit Aurelia. But uh, it's really, really good, supposedly. I can see it. Uh, it. It's just like a better Rudanza theory. Yeah, because it's like every instance of damage is gonna, just going to proc the Tattoo of Vitality and it just ends up popping off. Hey, you know, we talked about how the Aphelios version might not be good, but I mean, he hit a Mumu 3, a Lowey 3, and is, it, is Aphelios is like Biss? Oh yeah, Collector Aphelios is the GOAT. Very good. I, I think this, uh, I mean, I haven't been keeping too much of these, in, track of these encounters, but I think a bunch of extra items were thrown around, which really, really helps for a word like that. Yes, where you just have so many 3 stars that you want to itemize. Wait, you just play an Ira random Irelia on an ink board? Oh, I, I actually would in a lot of cases, yeah. Uh, I think Irelia is actually a really good user of a lot of tattoos, if you actually look at it. No, I mean, she fits. Volley. Yeah, with the Volibear. Mm -hmm. And it also gives you another, like, in this current meta right now, if you're playing for the next couple of days, it also gives you, like, kind of another out if you're not hitting Kaisa. Sometimes... I saw one time some person like just roll and they had they held Kaisa and they kept skipping Irelia and they rolled like past five Irelias and they're like, man, I missed my Kaisa too. I guess I'm just dead. And it's just like, dude, you could you could hit Irelia too. Uh, and then just play around Irelia too. It, it fits. Okay, Loki though, I, I like kinda understand it. Oh yeah, like, yeah, kinda. I get why, but I also feel like you should at least hold the Irelia. They didn't even buy it. They could have held it. Because the thing is, it's just, uh, Aurelia is like really, really slow. So if you're like, if she needs to be a primary carry, it, like, off the net, you can just get screwed. By trying Man, to play around I'm getting the, more dogged again. Aurelia, like, primary. Would you rather play around Kaisa 1, though, than the Aurelia? In, in some matchup, it looks actually us. Oh my god. Pro I mean, Man, probably not I'm in Aurelia, more too, but again. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some fights where it actually. It makes a difference. I can see that. Two Buffy and Brilliant Chorus, thank you so much as well. <clears throat> it's this the same Irelia. Uh, true, true. Actually, it wasn't this, Irelia too at all. This Yone guy's, or I mean, he's not really been playing Yone, but this guy's been secretly going beast mode this whole game. I saw him like eliminate a bunch of really good boards. With just Yone too? I don't even know if he has a Yone on his board. Maybe he has no items. Is it Kane 2 instead? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, we've been seeing this is, this is actually another variation that's been happening. Uh, basically, a lot of people when they have Yone 2 and they push levels, they just sell Yone and put and play Kane, uh, Irelia plus it's like Heavenly Warrior. It's a lot better with Reaper Emblem, it's hard to really get the full benefit out of it because you really want to fit Morgana if you're like really relying on your Ghost Slayer, yeah, or on your Kane. But they also sometimes just play two Reapers as well, and they just play for like a third, and then it's been pretty reliable. It's, been, it's happened like uh, every other game or so. 
But I think it's also because a lot of those spots, they get like a plus one heavenly. So. That makes sense. Thoughts on Lissandra was overhearing Presvin say fast nine with Lissandra might be the biggest cap. Like the highest ceiling. I mean, Lissandra's very, very good in these hyper carry environments where you're able to lock on to like a Yone 3. You catch the Bola Bear. It's, it's, it's such a big swing if you're able to land Lissandra. But I also think that Lissandra's like... It, it, you, how, how you position her is really key like in this fight she's nowhere near like the bullet bear so who knows if she's gonna even get to the bullet bear at all during this fight she's already dead and this is like a i mean it's, i don't know if it would win the fight but it's definitely like his position didn't help like he okay. he, he, he listened to yasuo like you, you can't tell me that's correct but like, are, are we sure Lissandra's supposed to be getting plus 200 HP? Oh that yeah, I said, I, yeah, I said that. I was like, what? This, this Lissandra is actually crazy. She just turns up to a straight up tank. <laughs> yeah, like that, that seemed like the most questionable thing. I know they wanted to like buff all the, all the units, but like, I feel like a, a bit more discretion could have been had. With porcelain as well as her trait, right? So it's like... <laughs> I mean, I would not be surprised if you're just supposed to play just like two Lissandra ones if you hit them. Nice. Eight, it's like even. Urgots from set eights. Yeah. Oh, wow. I was so close. I mean, the duelist player was so strong. I'm pretty sure if the duelist player positioned correctly every single fight, he would never lose. But I, I feel like neither player was really trying to get the positioning edge of those fights. Loki almost lost by locking his uh, Lissan. Oh, like, I'm pretty right, sure we right. could have thrown a third item on him at some point. Yeah, yeah true. How do you kill Volgar 3A? I mean, you saw one way, it's Lissandra, and then just like, keep CCing him. <clears throat> but I think he last, I think he lacked like a lot of primary burst around it because uh, he only had Irelia as his primary damage dealer, right? In Kane, and that's like kind of unreliable to take down Volibear. Yeah, it was like Morgana, Kane, Wukong. What is the portal? Just want to say the production value is insane. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thanks, though. I did not catch up. Oh, dude, I was asking uh, chat because sometimes there's some people who are um, native Chinese speakers I can read it. Dude, if, ah. if you could read Mandarin, man, I would blow my freaking mind. <laughs> oh no but like it's like, like sometimes like it just gives away like oh yeah yeah yeah, like an anvil or something <laughs> yeah yeah like if you get like like extra units or something okay okay prismatic party thank you kai prismatic party living forge buried treasures and birthday presents <clears throat> Man, I'm getting more really? dogged again. TBD? What, what did he pick that primes. over? Over. He rolled, uh, he just rolled buried. I mean, oh, that's, yeah. Buried Treasure 3 is really good early. I, I also don't think, um... Okay, no, I, I don't remember what this augment is called. It's 30% attack speed. I, I don't think this augment's very good. Oh, yeah, you don't like it that much. Oh, no, it's good. It's, it's really good. It's just not that good on 2-1. It's just a... Oh, 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 sure, sure. It's just the problem with taking generic combat on 2 1. Right, right. Oh, build a bud RE3! What the? And he has AP items? Okay. Build, build a bud Jax 3. Whoa, what is going on here? I think I, I smell some cheese attempts. I feel like these guys were going for like Malphite 3 or something like that. Oh, no, 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 no. This is game five. This is game five. Okay, so the, the, the reason why is this tournament uh, implications. Uh, if they if they can uh, get into a certain placement spot, then I think they're, uh, I, I believe, top four. Let me see. Let, let me actually look at it just to be more careful about how I, uh, what I say right here. Champion will be declared based off of checkmate format. Oh, it's checkmate format. Oh. 
Never mind. I thought this was, uh, I thought it was game five. Okay, so this is technically checkmate. Game five of eight plus. Okay, but isn't build a bud not really good for checkmate? Yeah, like maybe they need like a, a six or something to get into checker. Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but, but I got that, it. That's like my, my read. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. not be surprised if build a bud was like a 5% win, right? <laughs> let me <Yeah>. just check. <laughs> uh, let me see. Build a bud is a 7.75. Honestly, that's more than I thought. Yeah. But let me see. Let me compare it's, it. It's, it's still pretty bad. It's like. Oh. It's not the lowest win rate, Prismatic. Yeah, it's like the fifth. Yeah. yeah. For anybody wondering, the lowest win rate Prismatic is Infernal Contract, which makes sense. Because Infernal Contract, you're never really playing for first. Wandering Trainer, Duelist, Ink Shadow, and Behemoth. Are you playing around Duelist or are you playing around Ink Shadow when you get this? Well... It seems like he made his mind by summoning Titans. It probably just depends on your open air. Okay. I love Seventeen Shadow. I'm a big fan. Same in theory, but every single time I've like been in a spot to play it, I somehow just end, end up in a spot where, like, I just play Five Ink Shadow instead and play better units. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, Seven Ink Shadow is is awesome. It just feels so fun. And good. Ask Dissope your theory on taking Econ Augments often. What's my theory on taking Econ Augments often? <laughs> I, I've talked about so many different things about Econ Augments, so I don't know which one you're referring to. I mean, that just sounds like kind of fundamental, right? Yeah. Like if you're, but you're talking about like on 2 1. Yeah, in general, just like trying to get your Econ going, I guess, but. Uh, but, I mean, that's pretty good advice. On 2 1, econ's usually better. Their super fast game format is a really nice way to watch TFT. Where can I find this type of format on demand? Oh, the thing is, this is edited actually. They just straight up. They just straight up could cut all the downtime. There's usually like 10 to 15 minutes of downtime every single time. So, uh. The way to find it is to go into China's uh stream vods kind of like how you can click on twitch channels and look at vods you look at that but you have to log in in order to watch it on higher res otherwise you can't watch it on uh high res you, you have to lock it you have to log in to watch it on like 1080. oh you can reroll the jacks oh wait this is so sick reroll the jacks into what probably something worse i don't know <laughs> can do it. garen three pump up the story weaver into an eighth, yeah, yeah, probably, probably. That sounds pretty. That sounds pretty hype, though. Into Darius three, into Darius carry. How about that? He has spark, though. So he, he already has. He's already one third of the way there. Boom. I kind of, I kind of do miss Pandora's bench, even though it's probably bad for the game. They should not it back. I think but, as an uh, encounter, it's fine. But you wanted it back as an augment. Yeah, Loki. Wow. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's fun. Like, I, I, I Loki want think fast back as well. Oh, that's true. That's true. You don't mind like insane power spike toxic augments. Oh, he's rolling R. He's rolling Ari during the creep rounds. Oh, okay, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. He thought about it. He thought about it. He thought about it. Damn. He teased us. He teased us. You can't do me like that, man. What's the best one star three, one cost three star? I personally like Malphite the most for scaling purposes because Heavenly scales up your star bonus. You see the uh, EU Malphite carry tech? That looked horrible. <laughs> Dude, it's actually a giant inside joke on my stream. The, the, the Malphite reroll tech. Because uh, if you look at it, it's actually only been played like 20 times across every server uh, from like gold plus or something like that. I looked it up and it's average placement. It's like a 6.5. <laughs> what? There's no way. It's actually uh. so bad. Uh, it's so funny, man. It, it's, it's literally, I think it's like top forward four times. 
<laughs> that's it. Every other placement is like six, seven, eight. Oh, it's just so like, funny. was it actually April Fools or like, did you like top four of the once or something? I don't know. I don't know, but <laughs> it's just it's just so funny because now it's just like this giant joke. Every time I hit, hit like Malphite pair, Chad always eggs me on to go for Malphite carry. <laughs> And also, uh, I, I do this thing, like, I, I do Wist Wednesdays where I try to do terrible builds in top four with it, and uh, everyone wants me to do it for that, so I'm going to go for it. <laughs> okay, honestly, I don't think it's that bad. Really? It, no, 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 but, like, I'm, like, I don't think it would be that hard to top four with it, is what I mean. They, they nerf, they're nerfing Titans, man. It's even becoming harder. Oh, I mean, I'm pretty sure you get top four, like, if you try to force it, like, in five games. Like, one of them you would top four, I'm pretty okay, sure. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but I don't know if Malphite issue. would be doing all the heavy lifting. Like, you probably said that. Probably just have to hit, like, all the stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, okay. So, I had a theory that maybe if you get the Giga Nuts. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. The Giga Nuts would be Gargantuan Resolve plus Raid Boss. And it turns out that lowers the average placement of it. I thought that like by getting raid boss on Malphite, you would get like the the actual secret sauce, but it ended up lowering that EVP. I mean, it sounds like the stats on that would just like just be extremely fake because there's no sample. But yeah, there's like eight games of it. Yeah. I mean, maybe what it's telling you to do is uh, <laughs> not otherwise Malphite. <laughs> Ross, I think for two months. <laughs> Pandora's bench was always poorly played below top 100 players and the likelihood of hitting wasn't that high. I don't mind it. Oh yeah, like th that one was a very hard augment to use. Yeah, high skill cap for sure. Like, which is even crazy to think about because it was broken, but high skill cap. Very, very often I like watched other people take it and they would like always lose early econ to like roll useless stuff early. You're not very likely to hit. Yeah. Like, like even on this portal, um, like missing econ intervals to just roll units of like the cost you want. I don't actually think it's that good. I think you'd rather make, I think you'd rather make econ. Yeah, that's actually true. I see a lot of people like sometimes miss even two gold intervals because they want to fill up their bench with like three costs and and they hold a bunch of other stuff. So they're like, instead of making like 50, they make they're like at 38 or something like that. It's like, well, what, what are you doing? <clears throat> also, like, this, this is like kind of low hanging fruit. And I don't think it's that bad. I just don't think he's he's thought about it that much. Uh, it, I, I see Soju make this mistake like the most. Like he'll just roll, he'll roll to like zero for like the upgraded three costs when he's rolling for three costs. I don't know. And I, it actually mean? tilts me what Oh, for the Pandora's oh, like, bench. You're trying to roll Pandora's, two star it, it actually tilts me watching him play Pandora's. I don't know. I see. I see. I just don't think he's he's thought about it that much. If you're watch, if you're talking about like his stream games, he doesn't really think about his stream games very often. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the actual secret is that Soju's thinking about what is said in chat, like, all the time. <laughs> if you, he reads so much of chat, and so he's thinking about what you guys are saying, and he's trying to think about some way to, like, either, uh, shut you down, or, like, he's just, he's just thinking about it. <laughs> Can we get a rundown on how to play Trash Treasure properly? It's very situational in the game so uh it can't be succinctly measured the best advice i can give you is watch good players play it and pick up on like why they're doing certain things in fact it's actually funny that you asked because uh this morning i recorded a video of Juan May playing it um where he also did a really cool outplay towards the end of the game which is why i highly i, I did it for two i did it for three reasons one he got his fortune grief uh street griefed uh, which a lot of people ask about how to play that. Two, he played Trash of Treasure. And then three, he did like a really cool like positioning out play. So like the nerdy challenger players will like it. I think that argument is just extremely rusted. Yep. I'm a student program lead at Stockton University. I, played I thought it was extremely busted on PBE. League this semester and then I actually got baited by stats because it was averaging like a 5.2 on like the first few days of the set because people were bad. It has to do with competitive integrity and, and when it comes looking, to college vehicles. Now it's averaging a lot better, and I'm is pretty sure like the true average is like the three, is like a three point five. Sorry, <laughs> someone made a really long text to speech dono, and it was just happened to be talking the entire time while you were so. Oh. I just... <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? 
<laughs> oh, I was just yap I was yapping about a uh, trash treasure. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Like I, I thought it was I thought it was broken on PVE. Like extremely broken on PVE, and then when live came out, it was averaging in the fives. Oh so yeah, I, it's a hard augment to play, I think. So so I like I've like baited myself for not taking it for a week. Or yeah. So. And then I realized it was broken again. And and now it's averaging better, but I'm pretty sure like the true average is in is like three point five or more. Yeah. Especially if you really understand like how to play it very well. I think it might even be higher. Asa was the first person to turn me on to that. Asa's in general uh a player that I think people really underestimate these days. He has really good beats on things like a slightly ahead of the meta curve. Okay, uh let me answer this real quick. Frank says, Hi from now, I'm a student program lead at Song University. I played in collegiate TFTs this semester in this finals. Had a rather interesting situation come up. I would love your opinion on it. If you had time, it has to do with competitive integrity when it comes to college for college. Is it possible to contact you on Twitter about it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Actually, you know what would be good, Frank? If it truly has competitive integrity issues, you should post about it on Reddit and I'll do a dramatic reading of it because that's like what I also do. I do co-stream stuff and i also do uh dramatic readings of, of subreddit posts <clears throat> Ooh. okay so what about so do you think treasure treasure is better at different parts of the game like he skipped it at four two it's a lot better on two one um it, like if you're playing from super super heavy tempo and you're like slamming some sauce items you can take it later mm -hmm. but generally if your items are like just pretty solid uh i don't think you take it because it actually takes so long to do your transition turn on like three two or, or on four two especially right like you might you might actually just lose like 15 hp just to like time pressure yeah, and that's not to even say that there's like um there isn't uh complicated board states as well where it's like you need to hold on to like the last whisper but it's like on a carry and like how do you how do you reconcile that if you don't get it with your item components uh it, it can get really messy and not to say this is like why this guy lost the fight but this duelist player took it and he had hole crusher a middle of board has yep. not an ordinate like he could make another ordinate with these bows if he doesn't want red buff or he just didn't slam red buff like he obviously he ran out of time so i mean it, it's not something that just uh is very easy to do yeah call the chaos double lockets that is amazing do you agree with asa that call of chaos is like just almost always a pick like 80 90 percent of the time it's a very strong argument it's just uh if you're in a like a win game win the game position that if you click on the augment you can you lose, lose the game yeah yeah I, that's happened to me a couple times i mean i also spot, saw that tweet i get like tristana three out of nowhere and i'm like i can't use this i, I saw the tweet and he's he's overrating the four emblems and the uh and the three star three costs a lot like those are really really bad yes, on average yes terrible like i even think if you could pick the three costs that you get it would still be the worst option by far It, it, okay, yeah, not in every scenario, but I understand what you're talking about. In some no, no, scenarios, no, no. it would like, be really good. No, no, I, I, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. You think? Okay, what if you were playing duelists and you had and you just hit Volibear three? You think that'd be bad? Yes. Wow. What if you're even if you're playing like porcelain and you hit a Mumu three, like that kind of stuff? You think it'd be bad? Uh, nah. but the thing is. I mean, yes, because the thing is, like, you wouldn't be por playing porcelain if you didn't have a Moomoo 2 at that point already. Okay. And Got if it. you get something, like, if you get any other, other Econ ones, you can get, like, a Moomoo 3 plus some other stuff. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I guess in that situation, it'd be, like, Infernal Contract, but much, much worse in terms of the gold count. Because okay. unless it's... I don't know. Uh, unless your unit is already three items, like, upgrading a unit from two-star to three-star is pretty much giving it one item. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I actually stand by that. I, I don't think it'd be very good if you, even, if, even if you could pick. Oh my god, we're still carrying RE3. Blue buff, Deathfire Grass, Anima Visage. Woke. So that she can survive, like, the backline trick shot damage. 
my god. Is this next level? Like, what's going on here? She also has resistances from the Thresh. Tank. Oh, dude. Frontline Ari. Like, set four. Oh, my god. Or the, uh, the, the Mortog set six Ari. Warmog's Ari. <laughs> yeah. The Syndicate set six uh, Warmog's Ari. Dude. Oh, man. That's some ancient. That's some ancient lore. Uh, the set if you guys oh wow bull bear three if you guys didn't play set 6.5 uh there was re released as a four cost that would be like syndra this set where every time she casted she scaled and so more more dog theorized that the best way to build that re was to build her defensively like adding warmogs on her because syndicate gave you resistances kind of like behemoth so it was like a defensive trait so he thought that you could like frontline and build warmogs re to help scale her instead and everyone at high elo was very skeptical about it so it became kind of this giant meme where it's like if you lost with ari it's like well she just built warmogs ari instead so that's like a that's an underground meme for all the the lore experts in tft oh man that that that, that brings me back <laughs> oh i i loki spread some fake news about ari as well that time yeah uh, yeah what was your what was your I fake news about ari Oh no! I mean, because there there was no Nashor's tooth like that item just didn't exist back then. Right. And uh, RFC like made her like really really rare with her for the range, but she really wanted attack speed. Oh, I remember this. Yeah. So like like I I was like trying to go like like shiv rage blade, and it wasn't better, but. Um... Wait wait wait! This reminds me of uh, EU saying that RFC Ari extended her range when it didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, that that set was just so much fake Ari tech because they thought that a rapid fire cannon, the double bow item before red buff, would extend the range of Ari, but it didn't. And EU swore that it did. Oh my god. No, it, it's just the unit like desperately wanted attack speed, but there was just no good item that gave attack speed. There's yeah, no yeah, Nash's yeah, tooth. Yeah. So it, like I don't know, we were, we were all just spreading fake news, and the <laughs> yeah. unit was just never good. Oh man, that was funny. <clears throat> like imagine a. Uh, like set set ten R without Nashers. Yeah. Oh, check this out by the way. Five Sage Zoe three. With backline Diana. Oh, what the? We got Zephyr though. He went eighth. Dude, this Loki. This... It's a. It was a second row Zoe. Not really. Second row Zoe. Against only... Heavenly Kindred three. Yeah, probably not. China is cooking. I mean, this guy, DYZ, his name is DJ. He, he cooks a lot. Yeah, he, he also was the one who was playing altruist stuff as well. Kind of a chef, kind of a chef. This guy, this is what, the, the third game he's taken hedge fund? This guy loves hedge fund. He, I also say that he's dressed up like he works at one. His bench state is awkward. His item bench state is also kind of awkward. Oh, this is you know. such a hard. Oh, yeah, I mean, Maybe if he loses his turn, he's fine. Oh, he reforged all of Ari's items and went sniper's focus Ari. He has no he reforger has a... on the bench. He's, he's like Mana Zane Lissandra on bench as well. Ooh. Yeah. But, anyways, is our opponent playing Ari 3 carry and trying to greet a 9? Beast. <clears throat> is everything must go banned in china no no we saw someone take it but uh actually it might be i because the tournament that i saw them take it was not technically an official tournament it was like a show match or something like that it might actually be banned for the official cops that is true i don't know man is saying is terrible it fizzles twos or a cast it self stuns her well, today I learned. Yeah, it's not very good. I Zonia usually Syndra, like though. playing Zonia's on Syndra. That item is awesome. Yeah, I agreed. <clears throat> Death, Deathfire is like Loki kind of good as well. But... Interesting. Is it it? Because the faster cast? Yeah, just the tier and then just AP. Is Manazane Lily Abyss? Oh, dude, I don't. You, you're asking the wrong person about Lily Abyss these days. I don't think I've clicked on Lilia carry once this patch. Oh, I I, I think uh, Invokers is is like low key viable with a uh, trust treasure. Oh yeah, I think I've heard you say that before. 
I mean, at least at least the stats like it. But the item you want is just infinite uh, sniper's focus. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. And then um, Annie abuses the frontline ones or the walls as well. That is true. I mean, like you try to get this like sniper DFG Lilia and uh, uh, Eternal Winter plus whatever on Annie. Yeah. Also, uh, does the Azir laser like sometimes it just goes vertically? And then yeah, like, it'll, the it'll, it'll, just kill, like, it'll just kill everything. Yes, yeah. it just one shots everything. I've seen that before. Speaking of which, this is your cool board. Six invoker. You, you mentioned the six invoker board. Looks like he's barely trying to clutch out a top four here. Heisa two streaking. Oh, Cyber is also really, really good on Alun. That's the other one, because it just uh, stabilizes your mid-game so hard. Oh, that's good knowledge. That's good tech. <clears throat> I mean, you know what we should much, consider doing? We should consider having a page where we write the good... On TFT Academy, we should have a page where we show who are good holders of what are or artifacts. I think we could do something. Yeah, that might be something good to add. Uh... Next patch is going to be like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We should have uh, like 20, 20 more Ornan effects or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm actually pretty excited for that. Although, the chances that some of them break the game are very really high. Yeah, I feel like there's going to be some ridiculous ones. Like, they, there's no way they release 20 and it interacts very nicely with all 56 champions or whatever. There's no way. And, and traits. There's no way. I look he miss Orn Legend. Reportable Forge. Yeah. Oh my god. This is how you know that this guy is truly in TDT Addict. He misses Legends, you guys. He misses Legends. I mean, I'm not ashamed <laughs> to admit it. I, I, I mean, dur like, even like during the set, I, I admitted I liked Orn. It was pretty fun. That is true. Was, that is true. I think I, I think I said I was down for Orn to be the meta the entire set. And then it wasn't. It was, it was a good portion, though. A good portion. <clears throat> I think Legends giving you a 3 2 4 2 is really dumb, though. Yeah. I think it should have I just agree. been 2 1. But I think, like, I think they were worried. I think in, in what Mort would said or someone else said. Oh, wait. That's the end of it. Oh, I think that guy won the. Uh, I think he won the whole thing. Ah. Oh, what a beast. Beast. We did build a bud and went first. Build a bud, bud, Jax three into Zaya and went first. Cause it looks like we restarted the. the oh, dog. was that the uh, the double locket dummy? Yeah, double locket called the chaos dummy. Beast. Yeah, into with with Jax three. Nice job. Uh, I think more said that they want. They felt like if it was at two one, it wouldn't have been high impact enough. But it turns out two one was the most important one. So.